Hello dear students and welcome everyone in this uh, last video of our unit 1 where we are going to discuss few important topics which are now left. So the very first topic is system of plumbing. So in total there are four different systems of plumbing and in any construction of plumbing system we adopt any one out of these four. So the first one is the single stack system, second one is the one pipe system third one is the partially ventilated single stack system fourth one is the two pipe system all right so let us discuss first of all single stack system if you can see this uh, vertical pipe from the roof to the ground floor and this is the only single pipe which we are going to use in this single stack system and this pipe is running vertically from the terrace to the ground floor and this single pipe is receiving everything whether it be the black water or whether it be the soil water and this same vertical pipe is going to act as a ventilating pipe so yahi pipe waste water pipe bhi hai soil pipe bhi hai aur vent pipe bhi hai to isme bas ek hi pipe ko hum sare function ke liye use kar rahe hain and such a system is called single stack system so this one is the plumbing layout diagram and this one is the real life scenario here one vertical pipe is receiving all the discharges as well as acting as ventilating pipe also so single stack system of plumbing is very economical because it is using only single pipe but the single pipe has got too much load and is because of several functions to which it is loaded and there are pretty good chances that it can get blocked damaged or deteriorated very soon and you can clearly see in the diagram different uh, notation made w c s l b and b all these notations stands for these things like b for bath sp for soil pipe w p is for waste pipe w c means water closet s means sink v p means ventilating pipe and m h means manhole so the next system of plumbing is one pipe system so this is a advanced version of single stack system what we have changed in this one pipe system that we have used one separate pipe for discharge as well as one separate pipe for ventilation so there is one discharge stack pipe you can see it and there is another vent stack pipe also both pipe is running parallelly and vertically from the top to the bottom so the discharge stack is receiving discharges from the waste water as well as the soil water and this vent stack is connected with all the plumbing fixtures if you look at these joints and through all these traps and fittings the vent stack is receiving foul gases and is releasing to the atmosphere and through the discharge stack the waste water and the soil water is sent to the drain or the sewer so this was one pipe system the third system of plumbing is partially ventilated single stack system it has got two vertical stack pipes one is the discharge pipe and another is the uh, ventilation pipe as in this case the ventilation stack is now just ventilating those traps or plumbing fixtures through which the soil water just passes that's why only water closet traps are connected with the ventilation stack okay unlike the one pipe system in which the wash basin sink bath tubs everything was connected with the ventilation stack so this is the basic difference between this system of plumbing and that's why it is said as partially ventilated single stack system but overall we are going to use two separate pipes into this system of plumbing now the last system of plumbing is the two pipe system and as the name suggests we are going to use two different pairs of pipes so overall we are going to use four pipes two pipes for black water and two pipes for soil water and for discharge of this black water we provide a different pair of pipes one pipe for the ventilation and one for waste water pipe or black water pipe and also for the discharge of soil water we provide one more additional separate pair of pipes one for the ventilation pipe and one for the soil waste pipe so total there are 
four pipes just like you can see in this diagram this is one discharge pipe and this is another discharge pipe so this discharge pipe is receiving mainly discharges from the toilets okay so this is soil discharge stack whereas this discharge pipe is receiving discharges from the wash basin sink and the bath tubs and this is called waste discharge stack and both of these discharge pipe have got separate soil vent pipes like this is the soil ventilation pipe and this is the waste water ventilation pipe which is attached to all these fixtures except the water closet so this is very easy to understand although the drawing may be appearing little difficult but you just have an attentive look on this diagram and you will understand it very easily so this two pipe system is little uneconomical because we are going to use four set of pipes but the system is very effective and the atmosphere inside the house is very ambient all right so these are the four different system of plumbing now let us come to the topic pipe repairs so many a times when the plumbing system is in serviceable condition so there may be chances of pipe getting damaged and due to that pipe starts leaking and the joints or the pipe doesn't remain watertight so in those cases we have to fix a leaking pipe first of Now all stop the we water have immediately to shut, off shut off the main the water valve so that the joints or the pipe do not receive any water discharge and the pipe remain dry and we can perform our operation very easily Now, next you'll need to figure out what kind of material your pipes are made from and choose a repair product that's compatible here are some indicators to help you identify what you've got Now, this is a piece of galvanized piping here it's typically silver and you'll see it run for hot and cold water white pvc can be used for cold water drain and vent C PVC is yellower in color and it can be used for hot and cold water. Then of course there's copper piping which comes in different sizes and PEX piping. Typically red is for hot and blue is for cold water. Find the source of the leak to see if it's in the middle of a run or at a joint. So if we want to fix a leaking pipe at the connection and the pipe is metallic wrap. pipe then we have to use something called fiber glass and epoxy repair patch so this is very Our very important because this is a chemical activated. which is activated simply by package, addition of and water the and then we just area. wrap these cures, uh, cloth hardens just like, like a bondage leaking around area. the leaking and joint cures, to avoid leakage like a cast. or we can also epoxy use putty simple is plumbers activated put when you real, take the two parts and we have and to mix those two together. different chemicals the and they are activated the and when then the pipe the joint is dry and around we can the put it around it that and it will surely get hardened like silicone a cement. tape self fusing silicone tape bonds to itself as you wrap it around the leak stretch it to get it tight overlap each pass and wrap it beyond the leak on each side this should only be used on minor leaks or low pressure pipes when you go back to do the permanent repair it's easy to remove because it won't adhere to the pipe only itself so these were the repair techniques of pipe when there is leakage at the joint but what happens if in case there is leakage in the mid run of the pipe Repair clamps can work well on a leak in the middle of a pipe run. Choose one made for the same size pipe. You need a snug fit without over tightening the clamp. Place a rubber gasket against the leak. Put the clamp in place around the pipe and tighten the clamp. A compression coupling seals up against the edge of the pipe as you tighten it. Use a hacksaw or a pipe cutter to cut out the damaged section of pipe. Slip in the coupling and tighten. Push fittings require a couple of tools specific to the manufacturer. Remove the damaged section of the pipe. Use the deburring tool on the edges. Slip on the coupling. Use the special tool to adjust and the connection is secure. Here's some more helpful advice. An emergency fix can get you by temporarily, but you want to get a permanent repair in place. Even a small weakness in your pipe can give way to a disastrous leak. And if you're trying to sell your house, you'll need to have a permanent code compliant repair in place. Pay attention to the instructions on the label. Now, if your leak leads to a drinking water supply, make sure the product is safe for that use. 
Check to see if the product is compatible with the material the leaky pipe is made from. Don't even consider these repairs for any leak in your natural gas pipes. Contact your utility company if you smell gas or suspect a leak and have a licensed professional do the repair work. So now comes the last topic of house drainage plan or layout. So just like there is a plan for beams, columns and enforcement detailing, there are also plan for electrical fixtures, mechanical appliances and also plumbing fixtures. So any plumbing system which we are going to adopt in our construction of buildings, there we get a house drainage plan also. And in this plan, we uh, demarcate everything, just like the gradient of the floor. This is very, very important. The place where we are going to install water closet or the waste pipe or the sink or the wash basins or the different type of pipes which we are going to use at different places, which kind of plumbing system we are going to use and how we are going to discharge our waste water as well as the soil water and how we are going to discharge the rain water and how all the discharges are going to be passed through the municipal drains. So all these uh, markings are given on the map. So just like you can see all these indices here, like inspection chamber, this is the IC or the manhole, wash basins, water closet, soil pipe, rain water pipe, compound wall, this is the compound wall, water cooler, waste pipe, sink, vent pipe, gully trap, public sewer. So on the basis of plan, we decide which type of pipe we are going to use, which type of fitting I have to buy, which type of trap I have to provide at different places. Alright, so all these things are very, very important. Just like you can see in this video, everything is explained here. I want to cover how the plumbing works in a typical home. Everything we do pretty much relies on plumbing when you think of it for a second. Whether it's washing your car or brushing your teeth before going to bed you're using your home's plumbing system. A home's plumbing system is composed of four things, waste drains, waste vents, potable water, and rainwater management. So let's go through each process one by one and talk about what they do. Let's start off with the drains. Most homes have either ABS, PVC, or cast iron drain pipes and vents. These pipes are connected to all the fixtures in the home, such as toilets, sinks, bathtubs and showers. When the fixture is used, the waste is carried inside these drain pipes that have a slight slope to them down the main drain, up until it reaches the municipal drain under the street. I'll also show where this waste goes later in the video. Every here and there, you'll find cleanouts like this. These are what give you access to the inside of the pipes in case there's a blockage. The main drain pipe that would normally go to the sewers goes into what's called a septic tank. This septic tank, which is either concrete or polyethylene, separates the solids from the liquids and flows into a leach field or drain field, which then goes into the ground to get naturally filtered. The solids though eventually need to get pumped out by a vacuum truck to make sure it functions properly. Now onto the venting. For these fixtures and drains to function adequately, the system needs to be properly vented. When a toilet is flush, for example, the water pushes the air downstream, causing a negative pressure behind it. The vents are what equalize this change in pressure to prevent things like gurgling and pee traps being siphoned out, which would allow for sewer gases to find their way inside your home. These vents get their air through the roof and need to stay clear from bird nests and debris, or you're assured of having problems. Something else this vent serves is to relieve any pressure buildup inside the actual municipal sewer line. Some cities had their manhole covers blast up 50 feet in the air because rats would chew on electrical wires and would in turn create a spark and ignite the methane gas inside the sewers. So the vent minimizes the chance of this happening. As for potable water goes, it comes from the street like the other services and typically has between 40 to 80 psi of pressure. Comes into the basement through the concrete slab to another shutoff valve which is only accessible to the homeowner. Here we see the hot water tank. Your hot water tank, which is either electric or gas fed, 
is fed cold water to then heat it up and distribute it throughout the house thanks to the city's pressure. Some homes still have CPVC or copper lines, but new constructions use mostly PEX as it's reliable and quick to install. So back to before's question, how does one get water if there's no municipal services? In rural areas, people use wells. A well is basically a hole that's drilled approximately 500 feet in the ground to access groundwater via pumping. This water is pumped back up and goes through a series of apparatuses to make the water drinkable. A downside to this is if the electricity cuts out, you'll need a generator to get a glass of water. And the last aspect is rainwater management. In the past, rainwater and sewage was combined meaning the rainwater went into the same sewer as the waste from your house. Since then, they've been separated to make water management easier. So, when it rains, all of this water has to go somewhere, right? The rain that falls on the house's roof trickles into the gutters. Now, the gutter's job is to divert the water away from the house to prevent water infiltrations. So what most people do is install a 5 foot piece onto the downspout so the water has somewhere to go, which is perfectly fine. Other people prefer recovering this water in barrels to use as non-potable water to water their plants and flowers. So where does all of this waste and rainwater go once it's in the municipality's hands? Both of these services head down the road, which eventually need to be lifted at a lifting station, which pumps the storm and wastewaters back up so they don't go too deep. The rainwater dumps itself into a nearby river, and the waste continues to the sewage treatment plant where it passes through multiple filters and treatment stages, to then be released back into the nearest river and the cycle continues. The water from the river is filtered and pumped back into the city's main as potable water, which is safe to drink. And that's basically how your plumbing system works. So instead of showing you a two-dimensional house drainage plan, in this video I tried to show you a three-dimensional house drainage plan. So I hope if you have any question and answer, I would like to welcome you all. You can mail me on my email ID. I can provide you. And also, if you have any question and answer, you can always comment below the video. I will be most happy to answer you. So this was all from my side in context of Unit 1. You stay tuned and stay safe. Thank you.